Two friends, Alan Dale and Jerry Carew, who grew up just a few streets apart in St. John's East End, have been separated by Canada's geography for three decades. They came together virtually during the pandemic to chat about like-minded interests. Alan lives in PEI and Jerry in Newfoundland. Thriving in remoteness has been a common theme for both of them during the pandemic. Gale Force wins. The podcast is the result. Well, here we are in a very interesting place for sure. Are we ever? Are we ever, Jerry? Yeah. We're on board the uh, HMCS Margaret. Margaret Brooks. It's a Harry DeWolf class Arctic offshore patrol ship. It's brand spanking new. Now, Jerry and I just had the pleasure of walking through Irving Shipyard where we actually saw the steel being cut and assembled to produce this amazing ship. I can tell you right now, this thing here is something that all Canadians should be proud yeah. of. What a combination of government, academia, and industry, everybody working together to produce this amazing ship. But this ship does not work on its own. This ship needs people to make it function. And as I was walking through the ship today, I ran into a person whose smile lit up the room. And I said, I've got to talk to this person on Gale Force Winds. So without further ado, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I am the operations officer on board uh, the Margaret Brook. My name is Natalia Bostrov. Very uh, interesting uh, background, as you can tell from the last name. Um, so, born and raised in Poland. Uh, my parents, interestingly enough, my mom is Polish, my dad is Russian German. So, a very interesting mix there. Right. Um, so, I moved to Canada when I was 10 years old. Right. Spoke no English whatsoever, and my parents both endeavored to move into a community that wasn't so Polish oriented. So, we wanted to learn the language, learn the, the ways of Canada. Right. Um, I was born a very very regimented uh, household. Tell me about you that. Know, like, you got up every morning at a certain time, you got dressed, made your bed, you ate, you know, you ate with the family, you'd go to school, you'd come home, and it was a very routine oriented household. You know, there was chores like making sure that my father's boots were always clean. Okay. Really? So shining sh oh, my brother and I were shining my father's shoes. Yes. So already. But, but I'm just to say, boys, <laughs> if you're watching this, you hear this? My boots better be shined when I get home. So this is from a very early age, um, right. you know. And it wasn't. I wouldn't. It was a. It was a loving family, right. yes. um, but very different. Yeah. You know. And this is. This goes back sort of to how they were raised. Yeah. Uh, my father came from a military background. Okay. I was going to ask, well. it kind of sounded like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and you know, calling my dad sir, that was very common. Really? Oh, yeah. very different. Very yeah. different. So he was an officer, obviously, then? Was he, he was an officer. Yeah. Yes, he was. Okay. In the Russian military? Russian military, okay, yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, so he was an officer, and you know, I don't know all the, the ins and outs of right. his upbringing, yeah. but just from. You know how I was raised. I could tell that he was in a, from a very strict household as right. well, and I think that's pretty much what what led me to wanting to join the military. Although I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know Canada had a military. Okay, well, this is good. I want to. Okay, I want to go. I want to <laughs> stay. How old were you when you came? So I was ten years old. Okay. But my father, my my dad came here earlier just to yeah. sort of get yeah. the lay of the land. Right. Okay. And then my mom and my brother. We, after. I want to stay in Poland for a second. Sure. Tell me about that. What do you remember going up there? The food and all that? Oh yeah. So I distinctly remember going to a deli shop and still like, you know, Poland was a communist. Right. So still remember not having any monetary exchange. So okay. going with like stamps all right. where you were, you know, based on your, your household, yeah. you know, you know, you had four people, this is how much food you're right. allotted. Yeah. So I remember those interactions. Yeah. Um, I do remember having unlimited number of sports to, to be a part of. Yeah. Because back then, um, it doesn't didn't matter how much money you had. Right. Kids all had. You now they're whether you were from the lower class or from the higher class, we were all into sports. Education was great from what I remember. Yeah. Um, but what it was, was your sport? Opener. What did sports did you like? So my parents really put me into rowing. Okay. That wow. was that was a big thing, and that. Okay. That actually translated when I came to Canada as well. It's a year pursued and continued. I'm starting to see some connections here. Military, right. rowing. It's oh, all starting. Some of the things are starting to make it's sense. It's all connected. It's starting. It's all connected. <laughs> it really is. So you're 10 years old. You arrive in Canada. Yes. Tell me about the first 
few years in Canada for you? It was challenging. Uh, it was a culture shock for me as a ten-year-old. You know, I had my friends back home. Yeah. And tennis, tennis, it's a difficult time. Yeah. Right, because you're sort of in that, you know, teeny teenage. Uh, age yeah. uh, I just remember like even dressing was different right. you know I remember going to school for the first my first day of school and my mom put me in a I'll never forget this it was a yellow jumpsuit <laughs> my hair was in pigtails because that was cool back in Poland sure your first day here she did that yeah, yeah. well she didn't know any better yeah, yeah. right you're one of the cool girls then in a yellow jumpsuit well, we thought it was <laughs> right but it certainly yeah. wasn't it, it, wasn't. it, it <laughs> was it was difficult it really was you know all I can't I'm laughing now but I cannot get I don't mean to diminish that that would have been challenging it was challenging because I didn't we no. spoke no English and, and then ca Canadians were probably not that friendly to you no, in that like, scenario you know, think right? about it right who's this weird this girl right yeah. like what Look at her. Look at how she's dressed. Doesn't yeah. speak any English. My manners was very different. Sure. Right? You know? You're shining well, boots. Well, that's it, right? Yeah. Kids were, sh you know, wow. yelling out things. And here I am, you know, raising my hand or not. And it was just, it's a very, it was, yeah. it was a very challenging time. Luckily, we had Hooked on Phonics. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you heard about it. It's oh, a yeah. fantastic program. It right. certainly worked for me. Okay. I did do Hooked on Phonics. I did something like that on records. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it, though. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, so just, you know, slowly progressed, yeah. learning the language. and um, Wow. So, yeah. schooling? Do you remember schooling? Like, what did you do? You went to high school in Canada? Yes. Yeah, so, I did. So, back home in Poland, like here, you learn French as your second language. Right. So back then, we were taught Russian as our second language, not English, which okay. now has completely changed. Right. Um, so we did that, and coming here, learning English, that's all I, I did, but my right. parents really wanted to still ensure that I spoke Polish. Okay. So Polish is my first language, wow. still is. So do you speak Polish? You I'm speak Russian fluent. still? Russian, not so much right. anymore, based yeah. on just, you know, I speak to my family yeah, in yeah. Polish. Right. Um, but one day I will endeavor to go, to go back into the books and, uh, and learn Russian. But, um, so I did, you know, high school. I learned uh, English, did all that, and uh, went off to university. Where'd you go? Get this, I went to Queen's University. Okay. And where is RMC? Right next door. Right there. And I never, I put two and two together. Yeah. Military, Canada's yeah. a military, yeah. right? Right. Never put two and two together. What were you studying at Queen's? Psychology. Okay. Okay, so you're in Queen's, you yes, see these, Queens. People around in red yes. uniforms. Yes. You guys say, okay, yeah, he's got a military. Then what happens? Nothing. Okay. Nothing happens. So this whole time, I could have had this amazing you education, could, right. a free education yeah. through RMC. Right. right? No, nope, I decided to go Queens, you know, lots of uh, debt afterwards. <laughs> but um, I was actually at a road competition one day. And there's this bus, a recruiting bus. Okay. And at this point, I, you know, I got into finance. I worked for TD, I worked the corporate life. Um, this is after university. In Toronto. In Toronto, okay. yeah. I worked uh, right on Young, TD, yeah. right? Hated the... It was just not my thing, no. right? This is a little bit different than that. You would that. think, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I, you know, I was really tired of that, that lifestyle, and this bus was there. And I went in, and they were asking me all these questions. I thought, you know what? I'm going to be infantry. I'm an active person. I yeah, love sure, physical yeah. activity. Yeah. I want to be in the trenches. I want to be digging, yeah. you know? You think military, right? You watch yeah. all these movies, that's what you think, yeah, right. right? The Navy, I didn't even know they had the Navy. Right, fair enough, yeah. They're like, do you have a degree? I said, I do. Like, you're going to be an officer. Okay. I'm like, okay. You know what? You're the kind of person who wants to drive warships. I'm like, we have warships? <laughs> this is so, awesome. So this is like, it's, awesome. it's a recruiting, right? So they yeah. give you a CD. They're yeah. like, you know what? Here's, the, here's my information. Yeah. Take this CD and watch it. I did. And it was remarkable. Tell me about that. Well, it was like, you know, you're driving a warship, you have all these small boats, right? It's, a lot of stuff it was exciting, right? right? I'm like, this is, I love concurrent activity. I love a regimented lifestyle. This is what I grew up with. I want it. So I signed up. But it was really interesting because at the same time, I was kind of going through the RCMP process. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Yeah. You keep an orange in the fire. Right? But the, you know, the RCMP was going through a lot of sort of changes, yeah. and that process was taking a long time. And so I went through the whole process of getting to the military. I signed up, I got in, and then three weeks later, the RCMP sent me an offer. Okay. No I said, way. you know what? I'm At this all, point, I'm so excited for yeah. the Navy. I could drive a warship? Absolutely. And so, oh my so God. here well, I am. Now right? the story, huh? Come on, it's <laughs> remarkable. It's remarkable. Okay, I'm, I want to know. Okay, so here we are. Yes. Now we're here. We're in the Navy. We're here. on board this incredible ship. Yes. I want to go back a little bit, though, before you got to where you are sure. right now. Because you fit a lot in from what you've just described to me. 
What was it like the first time you went to see? Do you remember that feeling? Oh, do I ever. Uh, so my first day at Z was a very interesting, so I've, I never thought I could be seasick. Right. But I was extremely seasick. Yeah. And it's one of those things that sticks with you forever. You remember? To this day, I'm still seasick. You know, you really? do, a, you do a, a little cold move yeah. in the sea state, which is nothing, it's glass. It's seasick. You get a little motion sickness. You do. Okay, yeah. But I'll tell you, aside from that, it was an eye opener. You're seeing a city on water just yeah. floating. You're self sufficient. And you think about like how everything works and how people, how all the, the amount of work that goes into making this machine run, it's remarkable. And everybody knows their place. Right. So when there's chaos, because usually when you go to see it for the first time, it's chaos. Right. Because they're testing all these organizations. Yeah. yeah. But everybody knows where they're going and it's remarkable to see it. Yeah, it's just like you have all the it's parts like coming it's together, right. right? It's like an orchestra, right? Yeah. You, you have all these, all these parts working together, but it's making it work. Right. Just amazing. And I remember, I remember the CEO on the bridge, because I was, I was um, a bridge watch keeper while right. going through that process, yeah. so my main job yeah. was on the bridge. I just remember the CEO just being so calm and collected and just seeing that leadership and their their way of being was like, that is remarkable. And yeah. that, that that's what ignited me to keep moving forward. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, Alan, we, we met two naval warfare officers. Okay. Yes, yes, officers. I'm sorry, you're two right. Two little ladies on the Toronto. While I was on the bridge, I, they felt, they calmed me. Like, it was just it's spectacular yeah. to it see is, them doing is. the thing. Yeah, there's certainly a presence that uh, people have when they're in control of the situation. And, and I think that, uh, the Navy really trains that well. To keep the presence, keep things calm, oh, it's keep the things only way level. To make things work. One hundred percent. So, what do you do on board this ship? So, on board the ship, I am the operations officer. So, does that mean that you are a fully trained operations room officer now? So, I finally finished my long year course right. to be qualified to, to be an operations officer. Right. And to be the first one on board the ship was pretty exciting. That's a pretty tough great. course, right? That it's a went. very challenging course. That's a very, very challenging, challenging course. course. I mean, actually, you've got to, there's many steps to get to that course. A lot of steps, a lot of years, right? A lot of challenges, but yeah. I'm here. And, and this is all new technology, so there's extra steps, I would imagine. I will tell you, this has been the steepest learning curve for myself, on but the, ship. the on the ship, but yeah. the most rewarding. Right. So learning a new job yeah. as an operations officer, learning a whole new class of ship, learning all the, per so it's a much smaller cadre of people as well, right. but the same amount of work. So, so figuring out all those challenges, but mo but most importantly, figuring out my leadership style. Yeah. Right? Because what my leadership style right now will set the tone for. Right. I don't think I change much about you. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a pretty, you've got a pretty <laughs> engaging style. She you, does. Yeah, right. Yeah, you draw people in, and and people want to talk. In. When people are talking, that's a good thing. When people shut down and they're not that's talking, it. right? So that's a good thing. But you learn from the good and you learn from the bad as well, right? And throughout the career, I have to say, you know, I've been quite lucky to have a lot of great mentorship. Right. But you know, you come, you come across some, you know, where you say, you know what, that's not how I want to be, and I'm going to work really hard to not have those sort of yeah. traits and. Wow. I think so everywhere. Listen, uh, we often ask, we often ask our guests to leave the audience with a piece of advice. Now you've had a pretty interesting journey. Yes. There's no doubt about it. What would a piece of advice be, not only for the military, but in life? What would you say to people? What what keeps you moving? What keeps you going? So for me, I think it's surrounding yourself with the right people. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, sometimes the work itself may not be the best. But if you surround yourself with positive people, it'll get you through that day. So for me, it's surrounding yourself with the right people and good people. Jerry, your thoughts? Well, you know, we hear that a lot, frankly. You know, Alan and I got 52 hours of interviews done on this podcast. But it's an absolute pleasure to, to listen to you talk about that and the excitement that you have. And I can tell why. Like, I don't know if anyone can see it. It's this... this <laughs> this incredible bridge, but to have you in it just, I think, completes the package. Well, you. thank you. It's been so, a pleasure. And it's, it's an exciting time for myself, and the ship has uh, 
has a lot of exciting times ahead, so I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a guy from St. John's, and I always say that it's going to get old for anyone who listens to us, but we look forward to seeing you and this ship in St. John's. I'll be there to greet you. We're working on it. <laughs> I'm the one that can make it happen, myself and the CEO. So. All right. <laughs> well, an another wonderful uh, episode of Gale Force Winds. I'm just going to say this. If you can't find inspiration in this story, I don't know how you can't. It's unbelievable. Really remarkable. And thank you very thank much you. for sharing your story with us, inviting us in. Thanks for smiling and catching our attention to want to talk to you. you. It's absolutely wonderful. And thank you for what you're doing to Canada, for Canada. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, a, uh, another great edition of Gale Force Winds, and uh, Jerry and I, as we mentioned earlier, had the pleasure of walking through Irving uh, Shipyard, seeing uh, these wonderful Arctic offshore patrol ships being built. And I got to tell you, it was pretty remarkable to see the steel come in one end, big modules oh, yeah. being put together at the other end, and then you walk right out the door, and there's a brand new warship right in front of you. Well, you're right. It was incredible. It was unbelievable, Jerry. But here's the best part. Somebody gets to be in charge <laughs> of that brand new shiny warship. And that's got to be a privilege. Yeah. So without further ado, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm Commander Nicole Robusho, and I'm a commanding officer of HMCS Margaret Brook, our newest AOPV that just came off the line uh, and what, delivered. What, what does that AOPV stand for? Arctic Offshore Patrol Vessel. Right. Uh, so it was delivered to the RCN on the 15th of July, and we're now getting it ready to go and take it out on uh, our first sale in mid-November. It still has the new car smell. It's got new car it smell. Totally it totally has the new car 100%. smell. <laughs> Nicole, where are you from originally? So I've moved around a lot as a kid, but yeah. I, uh, I moved to Red Deer, Alberta. I went to junior high and high school in Red Deer, Alberta, so I consider that home. Red Deer, Alberta. I don't see the connection. <laughs> uh, not many people do. No, okay, but so <laughs> what was it about the sea? Uh, well, as a kid, I was in Sea Cadets. So yeah. I, I was a Sea Cadet from the age of uh, 13 to 19, and then I was also a Sea Cadet officer until I just, uh, until I just joined the right force yeah. in 2002. So through my time in Sea Cadets, I got to go and spend the summers out in HMC, or out in Comox, BC at HMCS Quadra. Wow. And from there, I got to go and drive on boats, uh, learn how to drive the training vessels, sailing. So I spent more time out, out oh, west it, in it, the ocean than... What was the name of your Sea Cadet Corps? Uh, RCSCC Red Deer. RCSC Red Deer. Yeah, that's where yeah. I was a cadet. Yeah. And then you went out to Quadra every summer? Every summer, and then uh, when I went to university, I went to university at U of uh, University of Alberta, okay. and I switched over and became an officer at RCSC Resolute in Edmonton, Alberta. Oh my goodness gracious. So, it's amazing, you know, you'd be surprised how many guests we've had on, and not all military, that have a, a foundation in the cadet organization. It's the best program out there. Tell uh, me about I didn't it. Know there was cadets in Red Deer, frankly. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Tell me about it. What it's, it's to the you. best program out there. It goes and teaches kids uh, self discipline, uh, time management, responsibility, uh, self confidence. So right. uh, you go and do ju do things that you never that a typical kid would not do. So right. going away from home each summer to go and meet new people from all across Canada. So I have a wide network of friends from uh, from West Coast all the way to Newfoundland and uh, up north even. like So right. it's, it's just a remarkable experience, the best program out there. So it's interesting, right? I came through the cadet program <laughs> as well. I was in RCSEC Terra Nova. That's where I went to cadet. And I still have friends to this day from when I was in cadets. Is I that the too. same for you? Yeah, that's the same for me. Yeah. So what is that about? Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's not many people can go and say they've maintained friendships from uh, when they're a teenager. So it's going on 30 years now, right. if and not it's, more. <laughs> and it's because we've done something together, right? Mm -hmm. You go out to Quadra and stuff, and Quadra is a fun place to be. It is a fun right? place, yeah. Tell us where that is. Our audience wouldn't even know where that is. So it's uh, Comox, British Columbia. So yeah. it's, uh, it's out on a spit. Uh, called Goose Spit, and they have a, a cadet training camp there uh, that they go in uh, during summers. They go and bring about a thousand cadets from all over Canada to participate in various activities and, and coursing. Uh, and as they keep going out there, they move up from uh, levels of responsibility to the fact to the point where uh, 18 and 19 year olds are running the the establishment with the supervision of the officers. 
Now, when I was at, because I went to Quadra as well, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So when I went to Quadra as a kid, they had this crazy thing, and it scared me, and I still remember today, called jetty jumping. Jetty jumping? Do they still have <laughs> they that? They still have that. Did you do that? Yeah, I did do that. It was always a thing to try to do it, uh, participate in the jetty jump at the lowest tide of the, the summer. Right. So you could, have a, you could have a fall as high as... We are standing off the water right now in Margaret Brook. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Jerry. So we were little kids, and we would walk off and jump in the water, right? Exactly. <laughs> and you'd get a little badge, as I remember. You got a little pin that you got a jetty jump, yellow one with right. red uh, wings. Ladies um, and gentlemen, I'm getting jealous now. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have this experience. <laughs> okay, but you know who else has the Quadra um, experience uh, with us in common? Do you know who else went to Quadra? And was the coxswain of Quadra? Admiral Santarpia. Admiral Santarpia, <laughs> that's yeah. right. And, it, and it's funny, I get into conversations with people, said, I went to Quadra, I went to, it's a really neat thing. I, I agree, the cadet organization is a pretty special thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so, and it, this is kind of what brought you here. It is, in the yeah. long run, there's a little bit of a story, like, getting there. But, yeah, well, come um, on, let's hear the story. So, uh, I went to University of Alberta, and I have my degree, Bachelor of Forestry. So I went and worked in the forestry industry for a couple of years. Um, unfortunately, the forestry industry tanked, and so yeah. I was doing odd jobs, consulting, but I didn't like working paycheck to paycheck. Right. So uh, I decided, I, I knew I liked this military thing. I knew I was I could do it. Um, so I went and signed up for the right force, and you and behold, almost 20 years later, here's where I am. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That's incredible, right? I mean, it's 20 years to get to this. Yeah. What does I mean? So tell us where we're stood. So tell us about the ship. A little bit about the ship. So HMCS Margaret Brooke, as mentioned, it's uh, the newest ship that the Royal Canadian Navy has. Uh, it was. Uh, it's an Arctic offshore patrol vessel, so we are going to be going and operating up north in the Arctic and Canada's Arctic and representing uh, Canada and, and and showing our sovereignty up north. Um, do you want to know like what? Well, she named that. You know, before you go on, you know, I just want to bring you back to when we interviewed one of the young uh, sailors on the HCS Toronto. We yeah. asked him about all the places he visited in the world. Do you know the one place he said was the most striking for him? Canada's north. And I'm still it's inspired by what that young man said to me. And it's I'm phenomenal. Listening to you talk about that, our sovereignty in the north is so important. Well, and you know what? And misunderstood, right? So right. Tell us about the north. Why is it so special? It's not everyone goes there, right. right? And you go and see, I don't know, you just see the icebergs, which everyone's fascinated with. You, you can see the, the wildlife, which we don't get to go and see here. Just the, the way of living is different. Um, there's a majestic factor about right. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just because it's, to me, it's an unknown. So right. it's, it's very majestic. And the fact that I get to go and travel up there on board this ship yeah. is just... You get to go up there and travel on a pretty cool ship. I do. Okay, right? <laughs> so that's cool in of itself. Ship doesn't function on its own, and it is beautiful. The ship really is. It's, it is truly something all of Canadians should be proud of. But it functions with the people inside it. it Tell me does. about those folks. So uh, the crew has been posted to HMCS Margaret Brook for some of them as long as two and a half years now. And so if you go and do the math, two and a half years, and we just got the ship on the 15th of July, a lot yeah. of people have gone and put a lot of time and effort to make sure that Margaret Brook is what she is right now. So I am looking forward to taking these people out on our inaugural sail in November so that we can go and see the work come to fruition to see that Yes, we've all worked together. It's it's huge. Right. We went from a bare bones steel ship to bringing everything on board to making sure that we can go to sea as a as a group. Uh, a lot of training that's been uh, been happening. A lot of storing the ship, making sure that we're ready to go. So to go and see that first time that we're off the wall, so we're not tied up to a right. jetty. Yeah. And the looks on on the crew's face. There's a lot of time and effort that went into this. What's that going to feel like when you just back away from the jetty for the first time? Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. But that'll be an inside that no one else but me will feel right. that. <laughs> but you'll know you're ready for it and all we're, that. We're ready for it. So right. the team has gone and put the time and put the training. Uh, we, we've done, by the time we get there in November, we will do everything that we could possibly have done to ensure that we're ready for this. You know, uh, Natasha, we always um, ask, our guests to leave the audience with a piece of advice you've had a great journey for sure and not only have you had a great journey to get here 
quite frankly, you're in the middle of a great journey <laughs> and <laughs> it, on a trajectory. To, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun the next however many years that you stay doing this on behalf of the country. What would a piece of advice be? Um, go out and do it. Like, uh, I don't know, you're never going to go experience stuff unless you go out and do it. Uh, and as you go and do your your, your journey, you're going to make mistakes along the way. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes. Rather, learn from the mistakes and don't do them again. Right. Make it better. Right. Make it better. Yeah. Jerry, your thoughts? Well, um, you know what? I don't think everybody gets a sense of what I'm seeing as you speak. <laughs> and it's happened to me multiple times as we sailed from St. John's, uh, interviewing various people. Your story is incredible, but there's there's also another character in in what we're doing with the Navy, and that's the the location, and and the ships. And as I stand here, Alan is here, you are here. Halifax Shipyard is right there. I, I'm so proud to be a Canadian. Mm -hmm. What this ship is, and the steel and metal and bolts that we saw earlier this morning, and now to meet you, taking command. Um, and, and exhibiting the leadership to say, you know what, I'm going to be nervous. See, that's what I like Ter about terrified. leaders. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> terrified, she said. Yeah, to, yes, terrified. Not only nervous, it's going to be terrified. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, coming and, and doing this much. with us. <laughs> well, uh, another wonderful edition of Gale Force Winds. And Jerry's right. The setting is beautiful. <laughs> the ship is spectacular. And I don't think you can gauge it fully on the podcast. And I can tell you one thing that you can't gauge fully on the podcast is the amount of passion this woman has for what she's doing right now. I can't begin to tell you how pleased I am that we were in conversation with you today. The world needs more Natasha Robichaux. Uh, I agree. And you know what, Alan? Because I'm so inspired, I'm actually going to show everybody what we're looking at. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Natasha. Cool. Oh. <laughs> we're going to edit that. Yeah, cool. Cool. Oh, my God. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.